Live from KSAT 12, the news at noon starts right now. San Antonio police say a gunman had several people in his or her crosshairs when one woman was shot and critically wounded overnight. That shooting happened outside a home on the city's southwest side. It was in the 3200 block of Golden Avenue, not far from New Laredo Highway. As Katrina Weber reports, the gunfire also caused property damage. Trouble didn't wait for daylight. It found one woman in the middle of the night. Police say the 30 year old was among a group of people standing outside a home just before 3 a.m. They say two people in a car drove up to the 3200 block of Golden Avenue, then sprayed the area with gunfire. Only the woman was hit and in a life threatening way. Police say bullets struck her forehead and shoulder, leaving her in critical condition. The shooters left the area right away in a white Nissan sedan. They also left a lasting mark on people here. The gunfire most likely rattled some nerves and definitely shattered windows. This car is one of at least a couple on this block that were hit by the gunfire. Police found shell casings in the street and took to homes looking for witnesses or possibly surveillance video. So far though, they have not found the shooter. Early on, the only clues investigators had were the white Nissan sedan with two people inside, who they say caused one woman a lot of pain. Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Coming up tonight at 5, 6, and 10, South Texas Crime Stories presenting a three-part story about the tragic double murders 17 years ago at a popular bar and music venue. It was called Taco Land. The owners of the bar and the doorman were murdered during a robbery. At 5 and 6, we're going to tell you why the two victims meant so much to so many. We'll also take a look back at the impact that venue had on the San Antonio music scene. Then on the night beat... I didn't take no plea deal. I didn't, you know, take anything. That's why I'm fighting for my life right now, because I'm, I'm innocent. For the first time ever, the man convicted of this double murder speaks from death row. South Texas Crime Stories, Taco Land Murders, begins tonight at 5. Today, the Uvalde community taking part in more services for the victims of that deadly shooting. Today, Ileana Garcia will be laid to rest. Her family says that she was very happy and outgoing, loved to dance and play sports. Her dad says she wanted to be a cheerleader and loved making TikToks. She was about to turn 10 years old and couldn't wait for her quinceanera. And a visitation is going to be held for Xavier Lopez. His mother was with him at the school during the award ceremony just hours before the shooting, not realizing it would be the last time she would see him. He'd been eagerly awaiting a summer of swimming. His mother says that he was funny and loved to cheer people up. This noon, police in several communities are now investigating shootings. The latest ones come in Chattanooga, Tennessee and Philadelphia. Comes as bipartisan talks continue on Capitol Hill. Senators are discussing a package of proposals that would restrict access to guns. Maybe sees Rennie Roy has the latest. Across America, at least a dozen mass shootings this weekend alone, including in Philadelphia. This busy street packed with bars and restaurants turned to chaos Saturday night. We got more people all of a sudden I hear like rat -tat 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 -tat. this video obtained exclusively by ABC News shows the fight that broke out beforehand. Investigators say the two men fighting then began shooting. They believe one of them died. Two bystanders were also killed and 11 others were injured. Now what happened was is that you had some, you know, sick maniac. Some people made it, some people didn't. The three who died identified as 27-year-old Alexis Quinn, 34-year-old Gregory Jackson, and 22-year-old Chris Minners, a resident advisor at Girard College. In Chattanooga, Tennessee, Saturday night, three people killed and 14 shot after authorities say multiple gunmen opened fire at a nightclub. It's that city's second mass shooting in the past week. Parents and children around the country on edge. My son is deathly afraid of school now. A new ABC News Ipsos poll shows 72 percent of Americans say gun violence is an extremely or very important factor in their vote for Congress. And 70 percent believe new laws to reduce gun violence should be a priority. A small group of bipartisan senators is considering a range of options from expanded background checks to red flag laws, as well as funding for mental health and school security. The Senate Majority Leader has given them until the end of the week to reach an agreement. Rena Roy, ABC News, New York. 
A fourth grader from Robb Elementary in Uvalde is expected to testify in a congressional hearing on gun violence later this week in Washington. The young girl says she covered herself in blood and played dead to survive that deadly shooting. The parents of one of the children killed will also be testifying. And over the weekend, two benefits, a benefit concert and a barbecue benefit helped raise thousands of dollars for victims' families in the Robb Elementary Memorial Fund. If you're looking for a way to help, we've collected a list of resources on KSAT.com. It includes a list of the official funds that have been set up. Also on KSAT.com today, the Uvalde Together Resiliency Center will be opening at temporary locations until a permanent location is established. That hub is going to assist people in the Uvalde area with a variety of services, ranging from counseling to handling insurance claims. The clinic will be staffed with licensed clinical providers and will take place at El Progreso Memorial Library located at 301 West Main Street in Uvalde. There will be both in-person and virtual services provided for free. You can read more about it on our website. From the east side to the west side, road closures are happening all over San Antonio. For drivers, you need to be careful. Traffic authorities, Stephen Cavazos has details on what you need to know to get around town. It is a new month and of course we want to make sure that you plan your commute accordingly. There will be several, clo several closures that is taking place in our area. So let's go ahead and find out what's happening here along Loop 410 on the west side of San Antonio. We know a lot of work is taking place over there. So guys, just pack that patience because we're going to be seeing some painting operations. That is current right now, but this will be up until Monday, June 20th. It will be overnight, 8 in the evening to 5 in the morning. And during that time, drivers can expect alternating main lane closures in both directions from Marbach Road to Ingram Road. But the work continues as we take a drive up here to I-10 over on the east side of San Antonio. Bridge work, we know that has been current and ongoing. Uh, keep in mind, that is from 8 in the evening to 5 in the morning. During that time, you can expect a full closure of the westbound main lanes from FM 1518 to FM 1516. Let's go ahead and take one last drive over here to Northwest Military Highway where utility work is taking place. That is current and should be wrapping up Friday, June 10th. Keep in mind, that will start at 7 in the morning and should be wrapping at 6 in the evening. During that time, you can expect a single lane closure in both directions from Loop 1604 to Hebner Road. But of course, this information is on our website. Open your phone and scan this QR code that will take you directly to the KSAT traffic page and that should have the latest on all the closures that are taking place in your area and of course anything else that could impact that drive time. And if you drive a car, you know gas prices are painfully high right now. It looked like we were starting to get some relief, but then prices shot up again. But it's not just the cost of gas, it's the cost of everything from milk to medications. Even our clothes are more expensive. When the price of, of oil goes up, the price of everything goes up. We use oil not just in gasoline, but in household goods, in food production, um, just really, really across our economy and across our lifestyle. Gas became more expensive after the ban on Russian oil in the U.S., but is that really driving these high record prices? And is producing more oil here in the U.S. really the solution? We dive into that during our next Case That Explains. Myra Arthur and I take a, a closer look at what gas prices are doing these days and how they're, why they're so high. And we also take you to South Texas. Once saw an oil drilling boom. That's all tonight at 630. Another state championship trophy headed to San Antonio, coming up in sports. A food drive benefiting the San Antonio Food Bank has hospitals asking folks to drop off boxes of cereal. Tiffany Wirtzis explains why they're asking for this specific product after the break. The San Antonio Food Bank says in Bear County, one in four children don't know where they will find their next meal. Baptist Hospital is hoping to help children struggling with hunger, and it's holding its annual Healthy Over Hungry cereal drive. Tiffany Wirtz has a look at how donating a box of cereal can change a child's life. It helps with mental clarity. Um, it provides your, your body with blood glucose to stabilize for the next 24 hours. Breakfast is a very important start to all of our days. You're able to think better. You're able to process better. Um, your energy levels are more stable. But with no more school, 
some children miss out on nutrition they need. Over a quarter of a million students who um, are out of the traditional school year um, enjoying their summer break don't have access to pivotal meals that they would have during breakfast and lunches that are offered at their schools. This is why Baptist Health System kicked off its annual Healthy Over Hungry cereal drive benefiting the San Antonio Food Bank to help local kids. Last year, Baptist Hospital in downtown collected over 500 cereal boxes. This year, they're hoping to exceed that number. The community can donate through June 13th by bringing the cereal boxes to any of the five Baptist hospitals in San Antonio. Tiffany Huertas, KSAT 12 News. And here's a look at the hospitals accepting donations. They are St. Luke's on the northwest side, North Central Baptist Hospital, Northeast Baptist. Also Mission Trail Baptist Hospital on the south side and Baptist Medical Center downtown. Look at outside with live cam. Another record breaker. It's looking that way. Oh, yeah. we're already up to 91. We're ahead of uh, yesterday's pace. We'll see where we end up this afternoon. Yesterday we got up to 102. Uh, as you might imagine, the aquifer is still suffering in a big way. It's down over a foot today to 641.5. That's not a good number. The average is 662.9, just to give you some perspective. Schist molds today, they're in the low category as far as your pollen count is concerned, but the big worry is the heat. Heat advisory is in place. It's going to be hot all week long. I'll talk about how hot we go coming up. A little warm, a little warm, <laughs> say the least. I'm yeah. worried about all the animals that are outside in this kind of heat. Well, you got to think about the animals, and you got to remember if you're taking your dog for a walk, the, the cement, the, mm -hmm. the asphalt gets so hot, so you got to protect their paws. Uh, and then you got to think about the fact that you're going to have some of the, uh, you know, snakes and all those sort of animals what? coming in looking for water. You got you, all things oh, you got to think scorpions. about. Scorpions. Uh, scorpions. Uh, had a run in with one of those myself. <laughs> I saw that the other day. Uh, yeah, so that was it's, a big sucker. <laughs> yeah, it freaked me out a little bit. I'm not going to lie. Uh, but that it's this time of year when you get in the drought, these these kind of things happen. Let's take a look at the time lapse. We had some clouds this morning and uh, now we're seeing those clouds basically go away here. We're almost completely sunny and that's why temperatures are really starting to shoot up. 90 degrees at the airport now. Dew point is at 67. We do have a good breeze out of the south southeast at about 13 miles per hour. And uh, looking at the satellite picture, whatever cloud cover we had earlier is, is it's gone. We're going to see sunny skies the rest of the afternoon. Any cloud covers way out here east of us. And uh, temperature wise, 90 degrees at the airport, 89 Holotus, 84 burning stage, already up to 93 in Pleasanton, one of the hot spots at this hour. 91 right now in Hondo and dew points in the 60s and 70s. So that doesn't bode well for heat indices later this afternoon. As long as these dew points stay up above 65 at least, uh, you're going to see some pretty significant uh, heat index values. Here's what we're thinking this afternoon around 5 o'clock. Heat index is size 106 here in San Antonio. That's not the air temperature, but the feels like number. And a lot of places will be in that uh, similar situation with uh, 108 Castroville, 108 Somerset. Just some brutal heat today. It is yeah, almost, it is into that danger category where you have to be really careful if you're going to be outside for any length of time. And that's why we have heat advisories in place through 8 p.m. this evening. That includes much of the area. But regardless if there's a heat advisory in place or not, it's going to be like this all weekend. You, you just got to take precautions if, uh, if you're going to be outside. Here's the case at 12 hour forecast 100 at 3 o'clock. We're up to 102 by 4 p.m. I think we'll top out somewhere around 103 this afternoon. 102 at 6 o'clock. We're still close to 100 at 7 p.m. So it does not cool down very quickly at all. Uh, even around midnight, we're still in the low 80s. Southeast chilly winds anywhere from 10 to 15. Here's why we have so much heat. That uh, good old heat high that we love to hate this time of year is uh, basically close enough to where it is taking over our forecast. It wobbles around a little bit, but it stays over Texas and directs everything up and around us uh, when we're talking about rainfall. Now, by the time we get into the weekend, it moves a little bit further west and it may open the door, and I mean just barely, for a couple of showers to work in along a weak frontal boundary. Uh, late Saturday. Now that front doesn't come through here. It doesn't cool us down, but maybe it kicks off a shower or storm at this point. It's just a 10% chance of rain. I think that's a long shot. We don't want to get our hopes up for that. 
uh, but then just something to watch. If we do get more 100 degree days, which we think we will, here, gives you, here uh, is a way to you know, give you some perspective on where we stand as far as consecutive 100 degree days. Back in 1962, we had 21 of them in a row. In 2013, which was a drought year, 15 in a row. 2019, 12. 2011, we had 12. And if we see, we, we think we'll see about 10 days in a row, maybe more, uh, we're going to be right in that range, uh, you know, top five, top 10, as far as consecutive triple digit days. So we are potentially setting some records here. And as we look at Tropical Storm Alex very quickly, this thing is becoming extra tropical. It's moving in the colder waters. We're no longer going to have to worry about this. It's not really a true tropical storm anymore, I don't think. Uh, and it definitely weakens as it moves north and east. So the extended forecast, a lot of numbers here. 102 Tuesday, 101 Wednesday, 101 Thursday, 102 Friday. And I think we actually warm up again Saturday, Sunday. Record challenging heat just about every day. Good thing we don't have to pay for all those numbers. <laughs> Same cost as the right. double digits. <laughs> yep. Wow, that's scary. Yep. Thank you, Justin. I think. Yeah. The Reagan Rattlers one swing closer to a state title, and a couple of girls softball teams are making South Texas proud. Hey, NBA Finals game two last night. Celtics and Warriors. Warriors got them back. This is kind of a blowout, 107 to 88. So now the series is tied at one each. Warriors relied on Draymond Green's defensive intensity. Below that game open, they did it in the third quarter. So now the series shifts to Boston for game three Wednesday night. Live right here in KSAT 12 at 8 o'clock. And then game four will be Friday at 8 o'clock. We know there's going to be a game five. That'll be back in San Francisco on Monday, June 13th. Hey, for the first time since 2018, the Reagan Rattlers are heading to the UIL State Baseball Tournament up in Round Rock. After splitting the first two games of their regional final series, the Rattlers are headed to Dell Diamond with a 6-2 victory over Lake Travis in the decisive third game of the regional final. Throughout this season, Reagan has had a slogan, Fight 98, which stands for the 98 miles it takes to travel to Round Rock. Reagan was thought to be one of the best teams in the state in 2020, but the playoffs were canceled due to the COVID-19 pandemic, and they reached out to the seniors and juniors from that squad throughout this season. We had a group chat with all the guys that year, and uh, uh, they, they, were, they were talking to us, and we were doing it for them, and uh, we're doing it for the guy, guys around us, and uh, Fight 98. Insane. Uh, it, it doesn't really it doesn't really kick in until we step foot there. It's kind of, I'm still in awe right now, but it's amazing. Reagan faces Rockwall Heath in the state semifinals Friday, 7 o'clock. And congratulations to the O'Connor softball team who made history last night in the UIL Class 6A state title game. The Panthers capped an unbelievable seventh inning rally Saturday with a walk-off walk to stun Lake Ridge 7-6 and claim the program's first state championship. Senior Jada Munoz was named tournament MVP. She hit two homers, including a game-tying solo homer to lead off the bottom of the seventh. I'm just so proud of this whole team. I, I knew we couldn't give up, and I had faith in every single one of us. And when Jada hit that home run, I just knew this was our game. I told Coach B the second I was up to bat, I'm like, we're not going to extra innings. We're going to win this. I've grown up with almost all of these girls, <laughs> and I think just winning this is just the best reward we can ever earn. Being behind the first inning and just knowing that we could come back and hit the ball as well, it's just it was so important to us to just not give up and just keep fighting. There was never a doubt. I mean, these girls have worked day in and day out, and Jada and Sammy came through, so have all the other girls, and the excitement is running through the roof right now, and I'm just proud as an understatement. That's all I can say. Winning the state championship, very impressive, but how about this? A 32-1 and overall record. Awesome. Congratulations to them. And for the first time since 2019, the DeHannis Cowgirls are UIL state champions. After losing to Dodd City last year's state title game, the Cowgirls got a little revenge on Tuesday. They defeated the Hornets this year in the Class 1A state semifinals, 2-0 behind a stellar performance by senior pitcher Marissa Santos. Then on Wednesday, DeHannis broke out the bats, and they took down Hermley 6-2 in the title game. Mabry Herman was named the tournament MVP after posting three hits in the championship game. So nice trophies coming up. These girls are like my sisters, friends, buddies. I love playing with them, practicing with them. The whole state tournament is like a big sleepover. It's so much fun. So getting to this point 
is a lot of hard work, but really, really rewarding and really fun. We had business to finish and we were going to do it no matter what. And that helped us a lot to, that we needed that extra push. And if we would have won my freshman year last year, then we would have come in here with huge heads. Like we, we knew what it was going to be like to lose. So we don't ever want to feel that again. So we didn't. All right, we talked about O'Connor only having one loss. How about this? DeHannis outscored their opponents 84 to three in the course of those seven games on the run to the title. Now the Cowboys will look to bring home their own state title. The Hennis baseball team swept Fayetteville in the UIL Class 1A Regional Final. And they're going to face Abbott in the state semifinals Wednesday at noon at Dell Diamond in Round Rock. Very successful season. Wow. It's been nearly 80 years since this World War II veteran flew in a T-6. But that long gap is now over. The moments a San Antonio native took to the skies in the type of plane he trained in for World War II. And we've got some good news for parents whose children only drink specific kinds of baby formula. Those products could be back on store shelves in just a couple of weeks. Details coming up after the break. Is your gas tank full? Americans still dealing with rising gas prices. They're continuing to soar. People are starting to change some habits though, including pumping the brakes on their summer road trips. Coming up today at 5, 12 in your size, Marilyn Moritz explains whether there's any relief in sight or is San Antonio headed to $5 a gallon gas? That story today on the News at 5. We want to get you up to date on Russia's war against Ukraine. Russian President Vladimir Putin warning the U.S. and other Western nations against sending any more weapon systems to support Ukraine. That warning, as Ukraine's defense minister is advising allies that his country will need even more artillery and munitions from the West in order to win the war. ABC's Justin Finch is in Washington and has the latest. Russia ramping up its assaults on eastern Ukraine. What happens there could decide the outcome of this war. ABC's Ian Panel on the ground. The air is thick with the sound of artillery barrages and the sound of air raid sirens that ring out everywhere. And it's not just a military that's hitting each other, but often it's civilian targets like this, causing a loss of home and a loss of life. Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky is pleading for more weapons to ward off the attacks in his evening address saying lives are at stake and warning the Russians are, quote, trying to destroy everything living there. His appeal for more anti-missile weapons and modern combat aircraft comes after President Joe Biden signed off on a $40 billion aid package for Ukraine and as several countries announced new security assistance packages, including ammo, tanks and weapons. Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin thanking those countries during a meeting with the Ukraine contact group made up of nations that support Ukraine. We're going to stick with doing everything we can to make sure that uh, they achieve their, their objectives. With Russia continuing its campaign against Ukraine, the highest ranking Russian official yet resigning from his post saying, quote, never have I been so ashamed of my country. It is about my disagreement and disapproval of uh, the current policy by Russian government and, uh, and, I, and I as a Russian diplomat uh, can no longer uh, be associated with this. Morgan Norwood, ABC News, Los Angeles. NATO kicked off its naval exercises in the Baltic Sea on Sunday with more than 7,000 personnel, 45 ships, 75 aircraft from 16 countries participating. The newest additions to the drills include Finland and Sweden, two countries looking to join the military alliance as concerns over Russia's war with Ukraine grows. According to NATO, the annual military exercises are meant to show the alliance's commitment to preserving regional peace and security. Parents who are still searching for baby formula could be in luck soon. This weekend, Abbott Nutrition said it restarted production at its Michigan plant. The company says some products should hit store shelves by June 20th. That Michigan facility is the plant that was closed by the FDA after they found some bacteria that could be deadly to infants inside some products. The company said it's producing formula for babies who can't tolerate other formulas right now, and then they're going to move on to making regular formula. A federal judge signed off on an agreement in May that laid out the steps the company needed to take to restart production. Other nations, meantime, have been shipping formula to the U.S. to help us with our shortage.
Elon Musk is threatening to walk away from his deal to buy Twitter. He says he asked the social media company to give him data on fake accounts, but Twitter hadn't done it yet. And Musk says that's a breach of their merger deal. Twitter says bots and fake accounts constitute less than 5% of its users, but Musk thinks it's much more than that, potentially as high as 90%. In a letter today, the billionaire said Twitter is, quote, withholding the requested data due to concerns for what Mr. Musk's own analysis of the data will uncover. But Twitter stands by its numbers. And speaking of numbers, live look outside. Uh, yeah, 92 now but we're gonna maybe add 10 more degrees to that today. Yeah, we, we were I was just talking with Sarah Spivey in, in the weather department, and this time of year, from our noon temperature to our afternoon temperature, we can often add at least 10 degrees. So we're sitting at 92 right now. Gives you some idea where we may end up a little bit later this afternoon. Temperatures, again, 90 degrees at the airport. Uh, technically, that was at the hourly. That's the hourly number, but uh, feels like 93. 89 feels like 93 in Converse, 87 in Seguin feels like 91. Enough humidity there to tack on a few more degrees for that feels like number. And that'll be the case throughout the afternoon. Heat advisory is in place. This goes through 8 p.m. this evening. You'll want to limit your outdoor activity or at least take plenty of water with you. If you're heading out to the splash pads, maybe you're taking the kiddos out there. Uh, 97 by 2 o'clock will be up around 103 this afternoon. Southerly winds will be gusty from time to time, 10 to 15 miles per hour. But most importantly, that UV index, and this probably comes as no surprise, is uh, about as high as it goes. So you'll want to take sunscreen with you and lots of it. It can start burning in about 10 minutes. We're going to have more on this heat, how long it's going to last, and how much higher these numbers may go. That's coming up in just a few minutes. Thank you, Justin. Today, D-Day. On June 6, 1944, the Allied forces landed on the beaches of Normandy in what is now considered a major turning point in World War II. That day, more than 4,000 Allied soldiers lost their lives. More than 2,500 of them were Americans. And meet 97-year-old World War II veteran Jerry Auerbach. He had a chance to take to the skies in one of the planes that he trained in during World War II, Saturday at Stenson Airport. It was thanks to the commemorative Air Force. And as soon as Auerbach was back on the ground, he was ready to hit the skies again. How'd it go, sir? Pretty good. What do you think? Let's do it again. Auerbach enlisted at 18 years old. He joined the Army Air Corps during World War II. He flew about 20 combat missions over Japan. Afterward, he joined the Air Force where he got his pilot's license and made more than 200 cargo trips to Germany. And you can read more about this story on ksat.com. Movies that usually open up huge see their ticket sales fall by at least 50% in the second weekend out. That's usually a certain high flying sequel is defying the odds and setting more records. We're going to take a look at the weekend box office top five coming up. One billion dollars has been lost in cryptocurrency scams since 2021. Why fraudsters are targeting the digital currency coming up. These are your top headlines from Cheddar News. Peter Navarro, former Trump administration advisor, was indicted by a federal grand jury Friday that for contempt of Congress for refusing to cooperate with the House's January 6th investigation. Navarro was arrested at a Washington area airport Friday on his way to Nashville. He faces two contempt charges, each with a maximum sentence of a year in prison. Meanwhile, cryptocurrency miners are starting to sell their tokens to keep up with mining costs. This comes as the industry is going through an all-time low. 195,000 coins have now been exchanged by miners in the month of May that, according to CoinMetrics, publicly traded miners riot blockchain that's down 72 percent since december and russian president vladimir putin threatened sunday that moscow would strike new targets as if the u.s is supplying long-range missiles to ukraine this comes after president biden announced that the u.s will be providing more military support to ukraine at the same time russia resumed attacks on kiev since pulling back last month and that's your chatter news update i'm baker Pachado coming to you from cheddar studios in lower manhattan
The Federal Trade Commission is warning that one out of every four dollars lost to fraud is related to cryptocurrency scams. More than one billion dollars has been stolen from 46,000 people since the start of 2021. According to new FTC report, cryptocurrency scammers typically target a younger age group for victims. The FTC says age 25 to 40 are three times more likely to lose money due to fraud and much of it involves Bitcoin. Cryptocurrency gives scammers the advantage of having to no bank to flag suspicious transactions and transfers that can't be reversed. The FTC's warning comes at a particularly volatile time in the crypto market. Pain at the pump isn't going away anytime soon. Gas prices surging once again. Here we go. According to AAA, the national average jumped to $4.87. That's a 25 cent hike just over the last week and a 59 cent hike in just one month. There are now states with gas above $5 a gallon. Georgia is the only state with the average below $4.30 a gallon. Oil prices continue to increase even after OPEC announced plans to ramp up production. Oil analysts expect the national average to hit more than $5 in the next 10 days. Now to what could be a very busy and very chaotic summer at airports around the country. Demand for air travel soaring while airlines are cutting back on flights. Here's ABC's Gio Benitez with more. Is it the summer of travel hassles? Many experts now predicting mayhem at airports across America. This weekend alone, more than 1,000 canceled flights and more than 8,000 flights delayed, many because of weather and staffing issues. So we're, you know, kind of scrambling, trying to figure out what to do. Tamara Bat speaking with us from Salt Lake City Airport, trying to get home to Austin. Her flight was canceled. Her new one wouldn't get her home for another 24 hours. I feel exhausted and frustrated. Um, just want to get the kids home. So we can kind of get back to our regular routine. You know, no one has any answers. No one really wants to go the extra mile for you. Thousands of people trying to call airlines, hearing messages like these. Our service lines are very busy at the moment, and waiting times are longer than normal. Now with a record number of air travelers expected this summer, perhaps more than 3 million a day, airlines are cutting back on flights to have staff on hand ready to jump in. JetBlue cutting flights by 10 to 15 percent of 2019 levels. Delta cutting 100 flights a day this summer. Delta CEO Ed Bastian speaking with us about the crush of travelers. It's a challenge. There's, there's no question about it. And we've been staffing. We fired 15,000 people over the last 14 months to get ready for it. But there's a lot of training. There's a lot of experience. Our pilots need to get staffed. We're only a little over 80% recovered as an airline, yet the demand is already over 100%. Wow. So that's where the challenge comes in. That's where the challenge comes in. So what do you do if your flight is canceled? The biggest tip, act fast. You want to try and use every avenue you possibly can. So that means if you're at the airport, get in line find an agent you can talk to. At the same time, check the app on your phone because sometimes you'll be able to find alternatives that way. And do not underestimate those airline apps because you can rebook your flight right there, right away. But look, at the end of the day, if those hold times are just too long on the phone, it may just be faster to go to the airport yourself and handle it there. Gio Benitez, ABC News at Phoenix Sky Harbor International Airport. Looking outside with live cam, beautiful skies. If you didn't know better, you'd say it's a gorgeous day out there. Yeah, you would think, you would think. But then we look at these temperatures and it is brutal. 93 is the high so far today. The average is 92, so we're already above average. And we're headed into the triple digits this afternoon. 76 was the low this morning. The record is 101. That is in jeopardy. That was set back in 2011. We'll talk about this triple digit heat and if there's any relief in sight coming up. You mentioned all the animals outside. Doesn't mean you start worrying about people who actually work outside all day long. I mean, they got to really be prepared for this heat, don't they? It's a very good point. We have the heat advisory in effect today, and we may not have it tomorrow. You know, the threshold if we get above 105 of the heat index and whatnot. But regardless if we have a heat index or, or if we have a heat advisory or not, it's still dangerous. I think all this week with these temperatures the way they are. So we got to be really careful. And as we look at the numbers, and this is purely just looking at the statistics here, since 1970, 
we've seen more summer days above average as we've gotten into last year, 2021. So we've added 37 degrees, uh, 37 days, I should say, above average when the, we're talking about the, the summer temperatures. So the temperatures are rising here, at least over the last you know, 40 years or so, uh, something that we're, we're keeping an eye on. As we go outside for you right now, we've got clear skies and temperatures 90 degrees at the airport. Dew point is at 67, south southeasterly winds at 13. That feels like number 93 when you factor in the humidity. And it feels like 93 in Converse with a temperature of 89. 93 in New Braunfels feels like 96. And these heat indices are only going to go higher as we go throughout the rest of the afternoon. Dew points ranging from the uh, mid to upper 60s into the 70s in some spots. Uh, thankfully, these numbers are coming down a little bit, but they're still high enough to where we're registering that heat index at this hour. And this is what I think it feels like this afternoon. 106 in San Antonio, 108 in Cashville, 106 in Divine, 111. Oh, that's how hot it could be in Creosote Springs a little bit later today. So this is intense heat, and that's the reason we have that heat advisory in place today. And that includes much of the area. Any of this area you see shaded in orange, that is within the heat advisory. And that goes through 8 p.m. this evening, and it, it could be reissued again tomorrow. Here's a case at 12-hour forecast. 100 at 3 o'clock. We're at 103 this afternoon, 102 at 6 o'clock, 99 by 7 p.m. Still looking at clear skies, and it doesn't cool down much at all. 84 by 11 p.m., 81 by midnight. Here's why we're seeing that heat. We've got a big ridge of high pressure out over Mexico, and this thing doesn't move much. This is that heat high that we deal with almost every summer. It does shift a little bit, actually moves closer to us by midweek, and temperatures basically stay right around that 100 degree mark. It does try to move west by the weekend, and that may open the door very briefly for a shower or storm Saturday evening. But the chances of that are really pretty low. And as you look across the state, it's uh, it's going to be a hot day, not just for us, but for much of the Lone Star State. 96 in Dallas today, 108 in Laredo. It'll feel like 111. We're probably going to be one of the hottest places in the country, and it stays that way again most of this week. The other problem we're dealing with is rainfall. We've only had 4.58 inches of rain so far this year. This puts us about nine inches below average. Del Rio is about three inches below average. And even Austin, which was doing very well earlier this year at 13 inches, is now about three inches below average. And that number is growing every day. We need rain in the worst possible way, and it's just not in the forecast, I'm sorry to say. You look at the next seven days here, it is all heat. 102 Tuesday, 101 Wednesday, 101 Thursday. 102 Friday and 103 Saturday and Sunday. We could be setting some records here, and there is that 10% chance of rain on Saturday. It's such a small chance. Uh, even beyond Sunday, as we look down the line, it looks like we're going to continue to see heat, and there's still not a lot of signal for rain in these computer models, which is uh, you know, causing concern as we go throughout the month of June, especially the way the aquifer is looking as well, guys. Thanks, Justin. Yeah. Top Gun taking the top spot again at the box office this weekend. How other films fared after the break. With no new challengers, Top Gun Maverick fell only 32% in its sophomore weekend, grossing $86 million for a 10-day domestic total of $292 million. Already Tom Cruise's highest grossing film ever at the domestic box office. $9.3 million kept Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness in second place. Bob's Burgers movie stayed in third, taking in $4.5 million. The bad guy still zooming along, $3.3 million, put the animated adventure in fourth place. And Downton Abbey, a new era, picking up $3 million, falling, though, to fifth place. The Wizard of Oz returned to theaters to honor Judy Garland's birthday. Garland starred as Dorothy in the 1939 film. You can catch a screening today. June 10th would have been Garland's 100th birthday. She died in 1969 at the age of 47. You can find a screening held by Fathom Events at their website. They say the screening includes a rarely seen extended musical number. Great speaking, movie. Speaking of musical numbers. Follow the Yellow Brick Road all the way to Market Square. <laughs> really? Yes. Yellow Brick Road? Oh. Yes. I think so. All hey. right. It is summer fun week, right? Yes, indeed. And what could be more fun than doing something inside in the air conditioning that includes a bow and arrow? And <laughs> what could possibly go wrong? Elaine Castillo is here from Freedom Fun San Antonio. So, 
all the great fun and you can bring it inside, right? Absolutely. With all the heat, you definitely want to bring something indoors. Um, we've got tons of different activities for families to really enjoy whatever festivity you're celebrating. Okay, and these are mm -hmm. padded arrows and... Uh, He's see, pointing that out I for need a reason, target folks, somewhere. and this yes. is why. Okay. Thank oh, you, John, hey. for volunteering. Ever heard of William Tell, John? He is wearing some okay. protective Is that gear. an apple on your head? Darn. <laughs> was that scary, John? You want me to do it again? Right. One more time. Yeah, John, you know. John, that was a... John, protect the important parts. Okay. <laughs> anyway, right. After that, you need something nice okay. to cool right. off it's with. It's okay. It's okay, Katniss. All right. Slow down. All right. Okay, now it's time to cool down with a nice, cool treat. Diego Reyes, here from from uh, El Amigo Snack is here. Wow. Boy, that thing's nice looking. I don't mind if I do here. What's in here? That's a piña loca, and it, there's actually squirt soda, so grapefruit mm. soda with cucumbers, sour candies, cacahuates, tamarindos, pretty much anything that you want for this summer heat. Oh, right. that's great. Okay. And we got to cook something too, right? That's right. Um, yes. Okay, we got Tony Sacheries, of course, with taco kebabs in an air fryer. All that and more when SA Live continues in just a few minutes. Temperatures are already up to 94, so you, as you might imagine, it's going to be very hot today. 103 heat advisories in place, and it is like that all week long. Record challenging heat. Be prepared for these uh, very hot afternoon temperatures, guys. Extremely hot. Thank you. That heat is going to continue all this week, by the way, and cooling centers around town are now open to help. Those centers are going to be in operation during normal business hours for anyone in the community. The City of San Antonio website has a map for you with all the locations and hours, and we've got a link for you on our website on kset.com. Speaking of heat. Yes, we've got a fire that's working right now on the southwest side of town in the 3100 block of Neptune. Yeah, that's between General Hudnell and Frio City, and that's south of 90. There are two cars, two homes, both of them burning. Uh, San Antonio Fire Department is reporting 36 units on the scene. We're still waiting to hear uh, any details about the people who live there. Yeah, no confirmation on any injuries as of now, but uh, we will keep you up to date. We'll have more information for you on our website, ksat.com, and of course, more for you on ksat 12 News at 5 and again at 6. Meantime, we're going to head over to Market Square. It's a Monday. And SA Live starts right now. Celebrate San Antonio. Coming to you live from historic Market Square, this is SA Live. <laughs> I think you both hit the mark. No, I did. See, watch this. I'll do it again right here. Boom. Right there. It hit the top of the lens. Okay, I'm just saying. This. Yes, all right. Seriously fun. It is fun seriously fun, though. Hello and happy Monday. We are kicking off summer fun week here on FA Live. I'm Fiona Gorsiza. And I'm Mike Osterhage. And, you know, a lot going on in the summertime. But the question is, what are you looking forward to the most? This you... summer. Yes. Yeah. Um, my stepdaughter is coming to visit. Oh, wonderful. Always fun over the summer. So she gets to hang with her younger sister, Sloan. And the boys are mm -hmm. going to be coming home for summer, too. The boys of summer are coming yeah, home for summer. Yeah, the boys so. of summer. You know, I love go, it when we break out into song. And they'll turn around and go back to schools. <laughs> Do we sing now? No, no. Okay. Oh. You're welcome. All right, so let us know at SA Live KSAT on Facebook and Twitter what you're looking forward to this summer. You may see your answer a little later in the show. All right, summer means lots of fun and games, and our first guest can make your home the ultimate playground. Elaine Castillo, owner of Freedom Fund San Antonio, is here to show us one of their next level games and activities they can bring right to your door. You can do this indoors yep. or out, right? Yep, it's both indoors, outdoors, beat the summer heat. Um, and it's definitely fun for all ages, families. Um, we get this rented out all the time. Um, it's a unique carnival game that um, you're trying to aim at the floating targets oh, uh, with your bow and arrow. Archery, okay. fun. Now, wait a second. You're the mom of four, including three boys. Yes. When my brother and I were little, we got in trouble for shooting bow and arrows <laughs> up in the house. But you bring that into the house and say, Into okay. the house, yep. I'm that mom. Okay. <laughs> so. So you have to hit the floating oh, yes. target. Yes. So yeah. you, yep. Yeah, you got like it this? right. You've got it correct. Which one are you going and then for, you're Fiona? just going to aim at it, Which pull it falls? towards uh, or against your ear, um, and that way you can get a better target. Hey, those <coughs> are those are good aims. Okay. Yes, okay. but we still have more. nothing. Okay. And okay. believe me, this is addicting. So you get, you know, lines of people all the time. Oh, I'm sure. <laughs> and just the competition. Ah! Oops. 
See, oh, yeah. what did no, I tell you? Know. I said, as soon as we do this, That's he's going to hit one, and he does. <laughs> and he does this go. every time. Okay. Since we had a lot of practice yeah. before. <laughs> we'll go grab these nice. things. He's going to go nice. grab those. Now, this is just one of many options as far as games, yes. right? Yes, so a lot of our popular activities, aside from our hover ball, we have archery tag, so it's played just like dodgeball. Um, it's safe. You know, we've got uh, the players who have protective masks on them, and they just aim at each other. Um, they, they hide behind barricades. We also have laser tag. Welcome back. Um, you were laser for tag <laughs> for the little ones, laser tag, advanced laser tag for the older ones. So we get that rented out a lot. Our foam parties are a big hit. Also, our inflatable movie screens. We have sizes, like all different sizes. Wait, and go back to the foam, foam party parties. Foam parties, I know, because that can't just be popular just for kids, right? No, I would think that adults no. wanting to like. You yep. know, recreate Spring Break 99 for <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> We've had all ages rent two, this, so. Two, count them. Two, <laughs> nice. I tell you. Okay. He's on a roll Dude, now. Dude, go, go for that one. Oh, Let's see if you can get I three. Love it. Um, Don't mind cool, if I do. The cool thing is, uh, for all of our customers, we offer three options for every budget, and he got it again. He did it again. <laughs> <laughs> so, one of them. One of them being a warehouse pickup where you come to our location, we'll show you how to operate everything, um, and then you return it the next day. So that you get the most play time out of that option. Then we have delivery where we send um, you know, our attendants out, they'll go set up for you, orientate the customer, and then pick up the next day or whenever the event is over. And then our final one, which is very popular, is our concierge services. We send a coach out, they not only set up, but they run the games and they pack up when you're done so you don't have to lift a finger. Mm. Wow. Nice. That'd yeah, be a great so. part. But, but again, mm -hmm. the best thing about this is small enough to where even if you don't have giant ceilings or something like that, a lot of this can fit inside. Correct. Correct. Obviously, you got to take all the, you know, the china and put it away and stuff like that <laughs> so it doesn't break. But yeah, yes. beat the heat. Yep, absolutely. We've got, um, you know, churches and schools and summer camps are really big right now. And this hoverball unit is being rented out all summer long as well as our archery tag. So um, we're going to be busy this summer. So definitely, um, if you want to book with us, um, you can go to freedomfundusa.com. That would be the easiest. Um, going on there, logging on, we have a live chat you can click on, get all your questions answered, 24 hours. Um, or you can text us and call us at 210-890-4386. Okay, what are some of the um, kind of more popular questions that get asked? One of the popular questions we get all the time is, what if it rains? Or what if the weather, you know, with Texas weather, we never know. So um, the really good thing is, you know, it's risk-free. So, you know, we always want to work with our customers. If you need to reschedule, we'll always offer that. We'll work with you no matter what. Um, it'll be a credit applied to something else. Even if you had, let's say, laser tag rented, you wanted it maybe two months later, we can definitely credit that new activity. So we definitely work with all our customers. Now we mentioned that you have four kids, you know, three of them are boys. Do they help out? Absolutely, yes. Those are, we've got two of my older boys who are coaches. Um, they run, they set up the activities, they run these events on their own. So definitely getting them to work. What's your favorite game? My favorite game has to be probably laser tag. Okay. Laser tag is a lot of fun, yeah. <laughs> and a discount for SA Live viewers too, yes, right? Yes, for any of the SA uh, Live viewers, um, if you book within the summer months, June and July, uh, we'll honor a 10% discount on any of our activities. And we have a lot, so we've only mentioned just a few. Um, log on to freedomfundusa.com and you'll kind of see what we have. All right, Elaine, thank this you so great. much. Now, don't forget, if you mention SA Live when you book any activity with Freedom Fund during June or July, you get 10% off, as Elaine said. For more information, just go to our website, salive.com, and click on the As Seen on SA Live tab. I don't know if you were counting, but I got about five I, or six of those over there. Okay, Robin Hood. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to make sure you put that up. Who couldn't use a tropical escape for summer? You can find it right in town here at Hugman's Oasis local tiki bar, and it is right on the river one. Yes, our Jen Tobias Trusky checked out how they can help you make you feel like you're on vacation with just one sip. Yes, it's an island getaway, but you don't even have to jump on a plane here at Hugman's Oasis, the only and newest tiki bar in San Antonio. And I have Dee, the bar manager, joining me now, and we're going to get a taste of your cocktail menu, right? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so we're actually going to start off with my San Antonio-inspired uh, cocktail. It is called Piñata Riot. I actually already have my juices in here. I've got pineapple and lime juice. I use a passion fruit syrup. 
Then we go with my Riot Mix, which is gonna have banana liqueur, Campari, and Reposado tequila, Ooh. which we love in San Antonio. Yeah. So that's that little San Antonio twist, right? Yeah, and love then it. a little bit more is some Hellfire Shrub, which is gonna give us a nice little kick. And we're gonna shake this up. It really feels like you're on vacation here, by the yes. way. <laughs> Especially with my flowers in my head. Yeah, I love it. All right, so we're gonna pour this all in here. And now you have some mint down there. I'm gonna have to need you to slap mint. I can do I'll that. Like express <laughs> those. Express those. I'm gonna good? put this pineapple in there. Oh, I smell that. Oh, it's so refreshing. All right, I'm gonna get that here. And we're gonna place this right in here. And Beautiful. And a nice little orchid. The presentation is everything. Yeah. <laughs> You want to try this one? I guess I sure do. Little little fun straw. All right, here we go. For the love of San Antonio, cheers to that. And what's next that, on the menu here that you're gonna make? Next on our menu is gonna be something really you oh, like it. Yes. Yeah. Delicious. So good. I'm gonna put that right there. Next, we're gonna do mm. is our super fun painkiller. It is a tiki classic. I have all my ingredients in here. The only rum that you can ever use for a painkiller is going to be Pusser's rum. We use high fat coconut. So I'm just going to have ready shake. Do you want to shake this one? Sure. All yeah. right. I've got a nice and popped open. <laughs> it was so awkward. Good. Another, another two seconds. There you go. All right. All right. Nice so we've got cold. a nice shake, get it nice and cold. And then we're going to pour this on up in there. I love all the juices and all the combinations that you guys have here. Yeah. It's so thoughtful. And I have fresh nutmeg. Okay. If you would like yes. to give me the fresh nutmeg. Okay. Remember, she's better at this than I am. <laughs> Perfect. Oh, yeah. Perfect little touch all right. there. And then I've got this mint. And, or I'm sorry, this pineapple, and I'm gonna slap this mint this time because I, I need a I turn. Heard him earlier. <laughs> she did so I nicely. Need a turn. <laughs> now, here comes the fun stuff. I have There's more. more. Oh. This is this is where I tried not to light this building on fire. Oh, there we there go. We are yeah. and. I am oh, going. Did it go away, Mr. Flame? Oh no, Flame! Sorry. Goodbye. Sorry. So I get a little us. bit more love. I call that love. <laughs> there we go. And here comes. Watch your eyebrows. Woo! Beautiful. Love it. Yes. All right, there we are. All about the experience, I tell you. Yes. That's gorgeous. That is a little mm. bit of cinnamon. It mm. smells really delicious. Uh, you get all of those tropical flavors. Here, let me tell you. And I Beautiful. got a little fun straw. And there's your coconut. I guess nothing I'll like, try this one. <laughs> nothing like drinking on your day at work. <laughs> mm. Mm. Delicious. Okay, so this is all we have time for today. But how many other different cocktails would you say are on the menu? So we actually have 16 house cocktails, 16. Yeah, six of them are going to be specific to San Antonio and then the rest are all going to be classics for you. And we do have a cabana hour Monday through Friday, 4 to 6.30, where we do four, $5 Slam Antonio daiquiris mm. and some $10 cocktails and nice. $4 house shots. Perfect. And yeah. the food's good too. So food you'll, you'll be able to eat something delicious. and yeah. there's a little sample here uh, that you can see. They are located the Riverwalk right next to Esquire Tavern. Yes. Um, you can find it if you can find that and um, come on down and, and have yeah. some fun with Dee. Thank you, Dee. No Cheers. <laughs> Still ahead on SA Live, you have tons of options to help beat the heat and they are all at a local snack shop. How each member of the family can find the tasty treat they're looking for in one place. But first, it's our summer camp week. First stop is a place turning kids into young chefs. We check out the amazing recipes they're creating. That's next on SA Live. Thanks. 